There is huge opportunity right now when it comes to gaming, when you merge that with crypto together with making money online. And sometimes I feel that I'm born in the wrong era because if I had this opportunity 20 years ago, instead of playing World of Warcraft, um, and if I had the same opportunity that you guys have today, this year would have not just been a huge time sink for me, that's one, but I know that I would have made a ton of money just playing computer games. This video is gonna be very different from all of my usual make money online videos where we might talk about funnels and sales and social media and traffic. But today, I'm literally gonna show you why this opportunity of understanding the direction of where computer games are headed together with how as a gamer you could be making money online when it's merged with blockchain as well as cryptocurrency so here's what i'm talking about okay so right now this is a what i would call like a watered down version of diablo i'm gonna play this game for a little bit so you guys can see how it looks like uh, but it's not about this game, it's about understanding direction of where the gaming industry is headed. Because when you can understand where this direction of the gaming industry is headed, you'll be able to spot opportunities, even if you're not a gamer. So understand that this video here is not about playing computer games. It, you, you could be playing these games to make money. But also, when you understand this, you'll know where to invest your money and how to build businesses around it and to be able to spot these opportunities when you understand why it's headed this way. Okay, so to explain to you one big direction that blockchain and cryptocurrency has given gamers is that because of this thing called NFTs, whenever you get stuff from the game, so it could be loot, it could be drops from monsters, gold, weapons, for example, you know, this sword over here, okay? Um, the epics, the legendary. For the very first time ever, this is when it is an item that truly belongs to you. Now, this was an opportunity that wasn't available to me when I first started off when i first started off if you know my story i was one of the top players in world of warcraft when it first launched in 2003 so yes about 18 years ago i was one of the top players in my guild in my on my server on the archimon server and i spent you know thousands of hours playing this game while my housemates were all getting high even though i played this game for such a long time and i was the first warlock in the game that got a full epic set it was called the fell heart set Unfortunately, there was no value in that. Looking back, even though if there was blockchain at that time, here's the difference. So right now I'm playing this random game just to try things out. And for your benefit, I actually spent some money on this game to see how things work, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through the top 10 games that I feel is an opportunity right now that you could be playing to show you how the concept, how it all works to begin with. To start off, let's just utilize this really crappy looking green sword okay i'm just going to equip myself with this sword now you might notice that i've got some legendary items and epics in here now where does this actually come from now i'm just going to exit this for a second and you're going to notice that if i were to go to my open c account i'd like you to notice first of all so this game over here i'm not asking you to play this game in fact i think that this game is pretty bad okay but i will show you why there's an opportunity okay so for example this game here is called lost relics okay and as you can see as i go into my account right now i've got this these in-game drops i've got this this rare bow called the silent assassin i've got the uncommon criminals katana i've got this legendary called the santa's slay and this drop truly belongs to me it's in my open sea account think of it as kind of like the eBay of NFTs where your item is stored on a blockchain. Now this solves a very big problem. Why? It is because, think about the games that's popular right now. You could be buying your skins in League of Legends. You could be getting your sword from World of Warcraft. That could be this legendary drop. But guess what? When this game developer shuts down, or if it shuts down, or if it decides to close your account for no reason at all, or for whatever reason, okay? Your item, your skin, your weapon that you could have spent 3,000 hours killing 150,000 wolves <laughs> for their meat to get this in-game legendary sword. 
But it, just like that, it's gone. Why? Because it doesn't really belong to you. However, because of blockchain as well as cryptocurrency, you could actually mint it on the blockchain and get it out of the game just like what's happening right now. And because it's on a blockchain, you can truly verify how many there is in circulation. So for example, I can see that there's 491 of them. I can see that there's 121 people who own this legendary sword. And I can see that the current market price of this sword is $639. To be clear, I did not farm this sword. I actually bought it on the marketplace and that's why it's in here because I want to test things out to see like, what's the big deal with this sword, okay? And, and I'll, I'll show you. So you can tell that right now, the cheapest in the market is being sold at 0.19 ETH. Depending on the price of Ethereum, right? This right now is approximately 639 US dollars and that's the cheapest one that's being sold in the marketplace. And as I scroll down, you'll see that the most expensive one is sold at 0.29, which is approximately $925. Based on this, you can actually see who are all of the owners of this sword. Now, this is the first thing I'd like you to notice. Remember I told you how I was the first warlock in World of Warcraft on the Archimon server to get a full epic set? You see, this is a sad thing. Because if blockchain was around back then, this literally could have said, you know, my fell heart, there's eight items in there, right? There would be one owner with me owning the only one and I could have minted this piece on a blockchain and sold it for a couple of thousand dollars. Now, this is the opportunity gamers have today. But again, it could be the case that you're not a gamer because if you understand the direction of where the gaming industry is headed, you could be a marketer, you could be an investor. And when you link it with the opportunities that lies ahead rather than reacting to these opportunities, which is what most people do. If you stay to the end of this video, you're gonna understand how you can incorporate it into the different games that's available to us right now. Let me show you a few different examples. So as you can see, this is the Criminal's Katana, which is basically this sword over here that I have in my account. So whatever I have in my account for this game, it's straight away linked to my stash within the game. Isn't that pretty cool? So I can take this green item that I bought that is minted on blockchain that truly belongs to me, that even if this game shuts down, I can take this game and I can bring it out of the game because it's a collectible that belongs to me. And they call this the metaverse and I can bring it into the metaverse and even potentially bring it to other games that is running on the same blockchain. Okay, so for example, um, you can see I'm level five right now, okay? And this is still like the pre-release of this game. But to me, this is like a crappy version of Diablo, okay? And, and that's because we are really, truly early in this, you know, the blockchain games. Um, and there's a lot of games that I'm gonna walk you through that follows, you know, this concept. So you're probably wondering, Ping Jun, why didn't you equip yourself with the legendary sword? And that's because if I utilize the legendary sword, I can only utilize the sword where they have drops that has legendary. And because of that, like the mobs on the map is going to be a lot higher level. I'm only level five, so I'll probably last, you know, like 30 seconds in that dungeon. Let's make this super easy. I'm going to start off with like the starting dungeon. And here's the amazing thing. Like for this game here, along with a lot of these blockchain games, you can't just, you know, blindly farm your way through because sometimes when you die, you lose all of the things that is in that same run, except for your blockchain items. So for example, if I died in game here, I would still keep my blockchain items, but I will lose everything that I got on this run together with the experience. So I will not get the experience in this run, okay? So right now, um, I'm, I'm level five, so I'm, I, I, I can be pretty chill here, okay? Now, this game, as you can see, it's like a, like I said, it's like a watered down version of Diablo, okay? So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna run around this, this map over here, and I am collecting loot. And what's cool is that the maps here, as you can see, they're all randomly generated. Now, that's the power of blockchain. Um, a lot of these games right now, so for example, um, you, this map right here, it is, every time I run this, this map, it is not going to be the same map over and over again. And I'm just going to run through the dungeon because I'm level 6 and this, this map is meant for like level, level 1, okay? So, wait a second, I don't know if I can handle this. Um, okay, this is, this is not how you're supposed to play the game, by the way, but, but I'm obviously very distracted. So, 
Um, if I die, I will lose all my experience that I'm getting from this level um, together with um, the drops. Okay, so, so, oops. Okay, so, so for example, this run over here. Let me see if I can just run my way through this entire map. I've never tried that before, but now would be a good time to experiment. Okay, um, maybe not. Okay, not a good way to play a video game. Um, be talking while playing at the same time. Okay, I, I I got a feeling I'm not gonna last. And I'm going to have a few people in the comments that's going to call me a noob. Um, <laughs> but trust me, this is not how I normally play this game. Anyway, so um, as I'm going through this map, so I'm just kind of chaining all of the mobs in here, trying to just show you how a typical map would look like this, all randomly generated. Um, fire is a bad thing, by the way. Nev do not run through um, fire. Anyway, so um, I'm probably going to die over here, but just, just to show you how it might look like, okay? So, the whole goal is to survive this entire map. If I don't, everything that I got from this um, map would drop, um, and I will not get the experience together with the drops in here. Okay, so, I'm running through this entire map. So, this is a typical example of a blockchain. Ooh, a trap. No, 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 no. no. Okay, so, let me just get out of there here. Um... Okay, okay, probably. Okay, look! I, ma I made it! Let me just pick Lucy's trap! Oh, okay! Let me get out of here! No, 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 no! No! Ah, okay, so basically that was the exit. Okay, I got greedy. I wanted to open the last chest, but I could have got out if not for that. As you guys can see, I'm back to level 5 again. And my stuff, I'm wearing like this level 1 common, you know, bow and sword again. And everything that I have that is on the blockchain still belongs to me. I just need to go back to my stash to retrieve the items that I got from this game. Okay, so you're probably thinking, so what is the opportunity? This example here is just to show you an example of where games are hidden and why people, including you, can play games to farm these in-game drops that you can sell in the marketplace. So if I were to go back to my stash over here, you can see that my, under my stash, my sword is still intact. I just got to equip it again. And this actually belongs to me, okay? Coming back to this example, okay? This is just one of the many games over here. Like I said, my whole goal here is to show you some of the games that I've been eyeing and watching to show you based on what it is that you like, you can actually pick play these games and get the in-game items and sell it in the marketplace. Okay, so they all these games, they have their own in-game marketplace or auction house. Or you can mint it into an account like OpenSea and sell these in-game items for money, as well as keeping it so that if the game becomes obsolete, you can still take these items and sell it in the marketplace. That being said, let me walk you through 10 best blockchain games of that you should be eyeing out this year that you can play or to make money or to be able to understand if this is the direction of the gaming industry, how to spot some of the opportunities that's available to you. And the first game is basically to smash the like button if you're enjoying this video so far. It does help this channel out and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to be able to get more ways to make money online utilizing unconventional methods. With that said, let's resume with the first game. The first one would be The Sandbox. This is a virtual world platform that has been around since 2012. It's been around for a long time, but it pivoted towards blockchain when it was bought over in 2018. And this game is all about the creativity of its users and the content they generate all contributes to the ever expanding sandbox universe. So the sandbox takes its lead from games like Minecraft and Roblox, but it seeks to concentrate power and ownership in the hands of the users rather than developers. So it utilizes NFTs to enable users to own their creations and reward them for building and maintaining the game's ecosystem. So users can in can create in-game objects through the edit function and then sell them on Sandbox Online Marketplace. The game makes use of three separate tokens to allow them to do this. 
So they utilize the SAND token, which is built under the Ethereum blockchain. And it's basically the basis of all of the ecosystem's transactions and interactions. Land consists of NFT representing digital real estate, which can be bought to develop as player chooses. And if land is developed successfully, it can be rented out and be sold at a profit. Finally, there are assets, and these are player-created ERC-1155 tokens that can be traded in the marketplace that represents the content generated by the users. Now, SAND tokens are available on uh, many different exchanges, um, including Binance. I'm going to leave that link in the description box below if you want to be able to utilize that exchange. But that would be the first one. Now, games like this has been around for the longest time. And this is a game that I particularly enjoy because this enables users to build stuff while being rewarded at the same time. That brings us to number two. Number two is the Six Dragons. Now, this engine platform is becoming a hub for blockchain developers. And basically, one of the most exciting themes is this fantasy-themed open-world RPG where players can explore endless lands and farm for valuable materials and craft more than 300 unique items and trade with other players. Now, just like Sandbox, the emphasis really here is on the user and the ability to design and craft items to then use or sell has to be earned. So this rewards players who participate in the game and help grow the ecosystem. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that it could be the case that you're not a gamer, but one of the things that you can do is you can invest in the coins as an investor. And the coin that powers this ecosystem is the engine coin. Now, why is understanding this important? So if you take a look at this game that is powered by engine coin, this is where I'm showing you how to spot opportunities. So for example, engine coin that powers that game, if you were to take a look at the chart in the last one year, now you will see that, in fact, if I were to go to the three month chart, you will see that this coin, which is a crypto coin that powers this game, this is kind of like the mother of all gaming crypto coins. You can see that just about three months ago, it's 0.38 cents. And today, this coin right now is 250. And what does that mean? It means that it has approximately 5x in just the last three months. Now, am I asking you to buy this coin? No, I mean, this coin has already improved. Do I believe there's still a lot of potential for this coin? Absolutely. It is a long-term hold. But this is how I'm starting to get you to think about the direction of games. There's a lot of games out there. Like I said, it could be the case that you're not a gamer. But if you understand the potential and what game developers are doing and the coins that powers these different games, it means that you will be able to make a much better informed decision in betting on the right horse. That's right, I utilize the word betting because this is still highly speculative. This is one of those things that's, you know, ultra high risk, ultra high reward just because there's just so much opportunity out there and we don't really know we're in such an early stage of crypto and gaming that we don't know who's going to be the potential winner but the potential winner is going to make you know and if you can spot the potential winner this is when you'll be able to make a huge return by being able to see which one's the eventual winner which brings us to number three axi infinity okay this is a game that has more in common with crypto investing with mainstream games like Call of Duty. Um, this is a game that takes its lead from Pokemon and Crypto Kitties. Here is where players buy and breed cute little creatures called Axies while battling with other players in PvP mode or the game's AI in PvE. So how this works is players need to buy a minimum of three Axies to get started. The cheapest being about $70, $75 at the point of me creating this video. So this is a pretty hefty initial investment, but as you are starting to win battles, you win these things called small love potions, which is basically the game's utility tokens that can be utilized to breed more axes, which then can be sold to other players. 
So the higher an Axis breed count, the more expensive it becomes. So these SLPs can be traded on Uniswap. You can take it out of the game and sell it on an exchange in an open marketplace. And you can also stake it and utilize it to buy NFTs in the game marketplace. And also this gives a holder a say in how the network is run. At number four, number four is so rare fantasy football. And collecting football cards was something I know I did. I collected basketball cards, dragon ball cards, football cards. What so rare has done is they have bought together the blockchain generation with digital cards um, for silly money. Now this is where licensing plus gaming plus crypto is going to make a huge difference. I know that when I played these type of games back in 1995, it was called Championship Manager 1995. And this is where you could have your own football team and have it utilize AI to buy and sell players and play against other teams. But this is next level. So this is where gamers assemble a team of five players by buying cards at an auction at the so rare marketplace or by trading with other players. And the cards are valued according to players and have the numbers produced. So for example, there was a unique card from a PSG player that was bought for over 55,000 euros. And this is just to give you, you know, an idea of how crazy gamers together with football fanatics can be. This is an example of how crypto can be utilized in gaming together in the collectibles market. Which brings us to number five. Number five is the Mega Cryptopolis 3D MMO that is built under the Ethereum network that allows you to buy and develop and monetize land with a decentralized map game. All you gotta do to start playing is you connect your MetaMask wallet or any Web3 wallet um, so that you can start buying land and developing it. And basically, the more you're willing to invest, the more you're willing to earn. Now, I got to mention that this is ultra high risk. I have seen a minimum of 10 games that has attempted to do this. If you have watched my previous videos, there was, you know, a couple of months ago, I spent about $25,000 just to explore this virtual land games. And you might have seen it. Some of them has taken off dramatically games like Decentraland, where initially when they launched the game, it was like $50 for a plot of land, but some of them right now are going to upwards of $10,000 for a plot of land now that they've sold out. So this is definitely one of those games that is ultra high risk, ultra high rewards. Please only put in money that you're very comfortable with losing. But basically, how this game works is you provide services, you could sell advertising space, you collect taxes on your land, and with last year, with this game going DeFi, which stands for Decentralized Finance, um, it also launched its own token called the Mega Token that allows players to yield farm, and which is basically to get returns through liquidity mining. And this game runs on both Ether and Tron and is both available on desktop and mobile. I initially, when I created this video, I wanted to go to top 10 but I realized that this video is getting way longer than it should be. So if you're enjoying this video so far, let me know in the comments below if there was any game that you liked the most, if there was a game that you felt should have been in this list that I somehow excluded. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to smash the like button. Again, it does help this channel out because YouTube is gonna recommend this video to more people. And because this video is getting a little bit longer than usual, I'm gonna resume the rest of this in a future video. So if you wanna be able to see and stay updated to the future of gaming, crypto, as well as making money online, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this one.